So remember, web services still is just an access technology, it's a programming technology. Yeah? And in reality, what you see around the world is that if the e-commerce services, you know, we've got a bunch of those, and the new web service that we launched falls into that bucket, uh, there's infrastructure web services, and there's software as a service services. Uh, we, we don't do much in that particular area, but there's a lot of companies that are really good in that. Um, so I see Fuji's progress in almost all of those areas. It's obvious why Amazon is really good at e-commerce web services. Yeah, that, that's where our traditional bread and butter is. <coughs> Although that's what people think. Yeah, when I when I used to think about Amazon, by the way, who of you are actually Amazon customers? I mean not yeah, okay, so this is the big problem I have. Yeah? When you talk about technology and Amazon, nobody wants to listen to you. Because you just want to put things in your shopping cart and you just want it to work. You don't want to think about that there's an eventual consistent transactional store underneath that shopping cart. You just don't want to know about you know, all these data centers that we have and things like that. This stuff should just work. And you know what? At Amazon, this stuff always works. Well, at scale. Except for we will get that. <laughs> no, it, it always works. And we have a long history where I think Amazon has growing pains. It's not just the web services, but I think uh, Amazon is as, as an e-commerce operation. We had a growing pains in, in getting to the point where we are. But if you look at the history for the past two years of Amazon as a, as a website, it's rock salt, absolutely, and at scale. So I like to believe that one of the secret sources we have at Amazon is actually operating at scale. Whatever we want to do, we can operate it at scale and reliably. Now, those are kind of um, attributes that translate back. When you say into, at scale, how many millions of users are on Amazon? Um, at the moment, over 75 million customers. Yeah. If you look at the architecture internally at Amazon, we, we, may, we could look at that. We have a, a big service-oriented architecture internally. Yeah. Each of those services are, are served by a team. And you could look at those as if they are all small startups. If we want to do something new at Amazon, we just fire up a new team, tell them to go build a service, and, and you know, we have a whole support environment for them. At a team, 8 to 12, we call them two pizza teams. Uh, you don't put more people on the, on the team that you can feed off two pizzas. Um, if you have lots of college grads, that makes for very small teams. But, um, but in general, no, that's just to keep the communication small. If the if uh, teams go bigger than that, it's very in ineffective, I think, to do development. But small teams, and you don't want all those teams to be spending all of their time on you know configuring servers, configuring load balancers, acquiring servers, all of these kind of things that you need to do. We have a small team. Actually, so when you hit the Amazon front page, the gateway page. Um, that page goes out to about 300 different services and constructs this page for you. So we become really good at running this yeah. very large service environment. And also to provide support for those small teams. Yeah. We need to provide to them also provisioning like EC2, storage, all of these other kind of things. They developed over time. And we start to realize that maybe, you know, if we so is it really good at doing this, Maybe there is uh, room for other people to use these services also. So that was the, the switch where we started thinking, well, maybe some of those services that we use internally for these small teams, maybe we can enable them for, for the larger public to use also. And then we decided to use web service interfaces to, do, to, uh, to, to serve <coughs> to the larger public. 